usually start off with a bursectomy. That requires using some type of a blade that can remove soft tissue. The bursa is very vascular, so it bleeds, and that means you need something to create hemostasis, and that's to stop the bleeding. That usually requires another instrument, something that will cauterize tissue. After you do a bursectomy, then, and everything's cleaned up, then you approach the bone. The decompression part of the procedure is where you remove the underside of the acromion. Uh, that requires usually a third device, something that will remove bone. We use a cannula, an introducer that's cannulated that has a line-to-line -line fit. Slide it right to it and then just reverse the motion. Now we're in the joint and I'll push my cannula back in holding the, the arthroscopic cannula. Take out the switching stick. To the left is the humeral head, to the right the glenoid. Uh, it's very easy to move around even with a, a larger shaver like this. If we want to look inferior, we'll get some distraction and that opens up. We can easily get our shaver to pretty much any position along the glenoid if we need to with some distraction. Superiorly, we have the biceps and the biceps anchor, which looks normal. And we'll just follow that on, underside the rotator cuff, over to the humeral head. Then I'll come back once again, the rotator cuff, a little bit of fraying. Quite easy just to clean any loose pieces off with this shaver. I usually don't use much cautery, if any at all, on the rotator cuff, just because it's tissue we want to preserve. And I start off with the shaver electroblade, bone cutting electroblade in the anterior portal. Uh, once I identify the tip and can see it wherever there's a good pocket in the bursa, I start my bursectomy. And then I just work the camera and the shaver blade using coagulation as I shave. I usually start off by running in oscillating mode and coagging at the same time. Get the space opened up. Keep my blades pointing towards the chromium away from the rotator cuff. I don't want the blades to hurt the cuff and that's also the only side that cauterizes is the blade side so it also protects it from the cautery. Once I get a little started and I'm on the chromium, that's when I go one direction. I run cautery as I outline the acromion. It significantly decreases the amount of bleeding you have while you're shaving. And if you do happen to hit a bigger bleeder at that time, you can just stop the shaving and, and go right over and coagulate it. What you'll notice through the whole case while we're doing the decompression, and I am going to do an AC resection on this individual, is I never change the instrument. It's always the same instrument the whole time, no matter what I'm doing. You should count how many times during a single case you change instruments. That kind of help you realize one advantage of this device. You could probably get somebody to take a stopwatch and time the, how much time it takes with all those changes too. And I think you'd be surprised just the time alone you spend changing. Again, we're at the arch, the arch of the chromium. So this is posterior chromium. Move back towards the camera posterior lateral edge all the way over to the lateral edge of the chromium. I've already got it isolated out. You can see where it starts to head up, deltoid attachment. And then we work towards the anterior chromium, cleaning it off. As we cauterize to outline this, we basically are doing our bursectomy. The more I go, the less tissue you see floating around in here. As we work to the very front of the chromium, that's when we're going to meet the corcochromial ligament. It's very easy at this point just to resect it off the chromium if you want. I typically leave it. It's a landmark. It also, by leaving it, I feel you have less soft, soft tissue extravasation of fluid. If you got bands you want to break, just pinch them up underneath the chromium, run in one direction and cauterize and that'll typically just cut them. And then just clean up the ends. 
If I hit a bleeder, just find it. Turn over and cauterize. So we're pretty much isolated anterior chromium, anterior to the point of the arch. And now I'm at the AC joint, still left the coracochromial ligament at this point. I'm going to go ahead and resect the clavicle as we've talked about before. You can use a little cautery down here low, but once you get to about this point, a chromial level, I stop using cautery on an AC joint of any type cautery. We go back again. I'm going to slide my device back lateral to the corcochromial ligament and we're going to go to our decompression. Very tight space. At this point as I do my decompression and remove this anterior chromium, really pretty much by definition we're going to release the corcochromial ligament since it attaches to the anterior chromium. Just kind of working back and forth so I can keep a good orientation of what I'm removing. Looking lateral, looking medial. Let's use our arch of our chromium and the AC joint as a reference. At this point, as I remove the tip of the chromium, I'm really releasing the corcochromial ligament as well. Do a little bit more of this, get a nice flat surface. Now I'm going to work down the corcochromial ligament. So all this is corcochromial ligament, and we'll just pretty much chew it up here. And by using cautery and the shaver at the same time, it, it very easily removes it off the corcoid here. I want to isolate out the corcoid in this person because since they have a rotator cuff tear, we're going to fix, and this is all corcoid here, is I want to release the suspensory ligament that goes to the cuff, which is right here. Still have a little bit of the uh, corcochromial ligament that attaches back on the base of the corcoid here. We're going to go ahead and release this portion too now. Just chew it up, basically. That's where my bleeder is. I'm going to go after it and we do it. It's nice being able to shave around a bleeder, knowing that if it starts bleeding, you can coag it while you're doing it, rather than uh, get a bloody field and have to come back with a cautery device to find it. And we just followed the corcochromial ligament up to the acromion. And we'll just debride it off of there so it's a complete resection of the ligament, not just a release. And we're really done with the decompression portion. If you can imagine having three devices on a patient's lap and having to deal with that and keep those up there, all the cords, all those devices, so from a scrub tech standpoint, it's a lot easier, a lot more uh, user friendly. Obviously, from in my opinion, from the physician standpoint, it's, it saves me a tremendous amount of time, uh, a tremendous amount of fatigue physically from changing devices in and out, and anytime I can shorten my surgical time, you know, there's less fatigue for me. I can do more cases more comfortably. And by shortening my time, it obviously makes the whole OR more efficient.